Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Movies That Move We. So today's movie is based on a book of the same name by uh, Terry McMillan. It's called A Day Late and A Dollar Short. And this movie, um, in a nutshell, um, let's start. It's with it's about family dynamics, but it also ties into uh, mental health, birth order, how people relate to each other. I know some people think that's not a big thing, but it, it is. It is. So um, Whoopi Goldberg is the main character. Um, her character's name is Viola. Viola is the matriarch of the family and she finds out that she is dying. Um, and she realizes when the doctor says, hey, next episode you have is it. You may have a week, you might have a year, but when it happens, that's it, outfit. And so she sets out to put all her stuff in order, you know, make sure the family doesn't have to think about services and all of that stuff. But she also recognizes that the things that she's ignored and tried to let her children, her adult kids, work out for themselves over the years, and even how she's responded to them it's all just been toxic and nothing is in order. And for her leaving, dying um, with that chaos didn't sit right with her. So as soon as she, she got that information from the doctor, she set out to start straightening everything and everybody out. Uh, one of the first things that she did was she kind of gave up the stress because there was a lot that she was was carrying where um, she was upset with her husband but not saying anything because she knew he had you know some little young thing living in the projects that he was messing with um, she was disappointed in her son because he was in and out of jail and as we go through this, I'll get into where the book and the movie differed because it was, to me, a big difference between the two. Um, you know, she had her oldest daughter who acted just like her. She put forth the image that her family was perfect, nothing was wrong in her family, and she made sure she brought that up and, you know, told all of her other siblings, hey, you don't have your stuff together. Here I am, I, me, my husband, my three kids, we're doing just fine. But at the same time, she was resentful, like her mom, about a lot of things. Um, her second her second daughter, Viola's second daughter, was the su successful one, Little Miss Perfect. Her marriage didn't last. She has a son, which we'll talk about his name in a minute. Um, she has a son that he's straight A's, He's she's preparing for him to go off and get all of these sports scholarships and everything. And yeah, there's some stuff that happens there. Her next daughter is trying to create just a happy, peaceful environment. One that's completely opposite of what she's familiar with. And then there's their son, which did I mention their son already? Mm -mm. Okay, so their son, he's in and out of jail. And um, in the book, he's not able to hold down work because he has rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. Nobody believes that he's as sick as he says that he is. Um, but that's the thing that kept him from working in the book. In the movie, they didn't delve too deep into that um, as far as why he wasn't working, but it basically amounted to he was in and out of jail. So that's the high level of what's going on. Talk about your your ideas on this movie. Um, <clears throat> when I was watching it, it was just really reminding me of two other films for some reason. And... It was reminding me a lot of soul food 
And it was also reminding me a lot of um, Raisin in the Sun. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because both movies, or all three movies, have, like, that theme of, like, the family dynamic and, like, you know, sibling order and who's behaving like which type of sibling kind of mm -hmm. thing and which one is getting favored more and all this other stuff. And I saw a lot of that in this film as well. And it was, it wasn't anything that I wasn't, I guess like it wasn't like this new thing that I was amazed by because I've seen it before, but it was a pretty good movie. I liked how, um, once she did find out that she was, she had a short period of time, she kind of let that go. Like a lot of whatever stress she was holding on to or kind of angst she already had about certain situations. She was like, you know what? I'm going to put this on the back burner and like really try to get them to come together because it was just kind of like, That's more important. that was more important to her than I guess whatever issues there are, there are even things there was also the dream of her going to paris mm -hmm. she realized you know what that's not gonna happen i'm gonna make the best of it and we're gonna plan this paris themed birthday party for me as long as i see my kids and my family together like i don't care right you know so i thought that was cool but that just kept sticking out to me for some reason it's like it was just giving me soul food it's giving me like the dynamics between the siblings and how they interact with each other how the siblings even interact with their parents mm -hmm. And their, their spouses and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of that happened in Soul Food. And it was centered around the matriarch either getting sick or passing away. It just kind of had that same theme to me. Like, Yeah. I think the, the difference I find in um, Soul Food is there was a certain level of it where all of the siblings were trying to prove to their mother and each other that they loved their mother more. Mm -hmm. You know, that I didn't see so much here. I kind of did. Because Charlotte, even though they didn't have the best relationship, when she got sick, it was like Charlotte was like, well, you know, I love mom. This is my mom. And then like she kind of had this ownership over her as if like, I'm, I'm her firstborn. I'm right. the one that's here to protect her. Well, and da -da -da -da, like this is, this is what I wish they explained it better in the movie. Um, but in the book, they pointed out that Charlotte being the firstborn from a very young age, she was her mother's right hand mm -hmm. as far as keeping all of the other siblings in mm -hmm. line. And she grew up, Charlotte grew up resenting that because it's like, I have all of this responsibility. I didn't get to do anything that I wanted or anything that I liked. Because the rest of them came from my first, yeah. you know, and it's like she instinctively knew that when her mother passed, she was going to have to be the one to keep everyone together. And she was tired of it. She got well, her own family to, to deal with. And oddly enough, her family kind of looked like the family she grew up in because she had. She has three kids, not four, but two girls, one boy, mm -hmm. you know, her and her husband, just like her, her mother and father run a business in addition to Having. their day jobs. But she's the one at home doing what her mother did. She's taking care. She's going to work. She works at the post office. They own a set of laundry mats. She's the one who uh, takes care of the kids, their doctor's appointments, all of that. And her husband is a truck driver. Mm. But she is the one who does all the stuff. And her mother said to her, she was like, look, you got to treat your husband better. And she's like, yeah, I do all of these things. And then he still wants a full sit down Sunday dinner on whatever other day when he comes home. And I have to do that. I don't have time for anybody or anything else. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to have to figure your stuff out. Yeah. You know, and so you, you kind of see that with her and her mother even said to her in the film, you got to stop acting like me. And that is when I heard her say that, I was like, damn, you know, 
getting down to your end, you start realizing and she's reflecting what's on her important. life. Important, and you get you get honest with yourself. I hope people in general are like that. But she she got honest with herself and was like, I didn't do anything to really help hold this together. Mm -hmm. You know, um, her husband. They were not divorced. They separated. Like I said, he had this little project chick that he was messing with. And no, I'm not saying anything bad about chicks in the project. What I'm saying is the way it was presented in the book was very stere stereotypical. And in the movie as well. She mm -hmm. was just looking for somebody who would take care of her kids, take care of her, and get her out of the projects. Mm -hmm. Okay? And she found that with... Cecil. Now Viola knew all about it. And the way she dealt with it is the way I think a lot of women from back when dealt, dealt with, with it, it, which is, you know what? If I'm going to complain about this man, then I might as well leave him. And since everything else is in order, I'm going to let him have his his side piece and be quiet. Mhm. Mm and that's how she dealt with it until the end when she was like, look, I know about that little girl you're dating. Um, and I hear she, she's expecting a baby and, you know, you're all excited about it. But the math ain't mathing. You may want to reevaluate whether that's actually your child or not. Again, between the movie and the book, that was handled uh, differently. Um, the other sisters, there was Paris who was little Miss Perfect. Everything she did was to please her, her parents. Mm -hmm. She had to be the best. She worked the hardest to the point she stressed her out herself out and started popping pills just to handle her day. Everyone knew she was doing it. Nobody Same. really addressed it until the end. Um, Janelle, which is the third born sister, played by Kimberly Reese Paris, was played by Anika Noni Rose, and the eldest Charlotte was played by uh, Tachina Arnold. But um, Janelle, which is the third girl, she was always trying to do things to keep everything light and happy. happy. Um, her husband died. And they had one daughter together. Her daughter was about four. Mm -hmm. By the time her daughter was about seven, she'd remarried. And the man that she remarried was a police officer. He immediately started molesting her daughter. By the time we meet her daughter, she's 13 years old. She's stressed. She's pulling her hair out. Her grandmother notices it, brings it to her daughter's attention. The granddaughter's trying to act like nothing's wrong. And Viola is telling her daughter, you need to look into this. That man is shifty and shady. Again, it gets more in depth in the book, mm -hmm. but she's like, he's shifty, shady. You need to get rid of that man. He, he's doing something to my granddaughter. And she didn't believe her until she walked in and saw him uh -huh. messing with her so this is the family dynamic it's chaotic in a normal way because <laughs> i think mm -hmm. not going to say that every family goes through all of these things, things but these things happen in families mm -hmm. um and again the way the book handled it there were some moments because i did it i did the audio book where I'm sitting here at work in the office and there were some things that were said that I was like, oh! <laughs> I had to contain myself because I was like, I don't need anyone rolling up on me thinking there's something up with me when it's just <laughs> something that happened in the book. But um, the book went way more in depth, of course. And I think the book had just a little bit more of a solemn tone to it. It was definitely more dramatic than the movie. I think the movie 
handle the the story the the, the overall telling of this story in a more light-hearted manner mm -hmm. but it really showed the way viola kind of said i can't carry all of this anymore but i also can't leave this behind for my kids to take care of and without it saying it, it it did did talk a lot about mental health because i mean think about what you might be carrying right now that you probably shouldn't be and also like aside from even the mental health thing it's like it's also like the patterns in families like when you see your parents do certain things it kind of will shape you into a certain person as time goes on mm -hmm. like especially like lewis's character i mean he saw his dad being a provider and like taking care of the family financially but it was like he kind of missed out on having his dad around as right. much so there are probably some struggles that he was having probably since he was a kid and i think she even mentioned it in the movie that like he didn't really um he didn't really apply himself in school he didn't apply himself with his marriage he didn't apply himself in life in general well what she mentioned is she was like i don't understand him he was tested and he's at genius level. level. The boy is smart. And in the book, it talks about how he reads a lot. He mm -hmm. reads all of this stuff and he can analyze and give you philosophy and stoicism and all of that stuff. He can break it down, make perfect sense, but somehow his life doesn't. Um, and it was because he had this distance with his dad, like you said, he saw his dad being a provider. He thought that's all he had to do, but he didn't know how to do it. His marriage failed. Again, he couldn't work because he had a chronic condition. Nobody believed him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a house full of women, you know, he kind of gets swept aside. So he kind of made himself small while some of the stuff he was doing may have come across as attention seeking. He just didn't really know how to deal within that dynamic. So, and it's funny, we, we just went through everything and I didn't spend as much time on Lewis as I did the rest of the family. And, and that's kind of what the story really was, that he was kind of this back burner character i wish they had kept his storyline in in the movie the way it was in the book because i think he would have what he was dealing with would have been a little more clear yeah it made it seem just, just like he was a you know i just kind of feel like they kept it based off of what i'm hearing the book is it sounds kind of like it has a more darker element than what the movie is or like it's i don't want to say darker it's just more serious yeah so it's like and i feel like even though they were telling a a, a story of like kind of like a drama or something serious kind of happening i think they were also trying to keep it lighthearted, and then at the end it's like you know okay we're one big happy family i think they were trying to keep that theme going and not to say that, I guess, I guess the book kind of just ended like where it maybe left you guessing a little bit. No. It didn't. It no, just kind of no. was like everything was It absolute. was kind of reversed. What, one of the things that Viola did since she knew she was dying, she sat down and she wrote letters to each one of her kids and her, her husband. But what she did was she had them... So, for example, um, Lewis read the letter that she wrote to Cecil. She read that to Cecil. He read that to Cecil. And Cecil read the letter for Lewis to Lewis. So, everybody had, their letters were all mixed up. But she did it in such a way because she understood her family. Um, and she 
said, this one needs that one. That one needs to clean this thing up. This one needs to understand that one. And she just wrote a series of letters. In the book, she gave these letters to her friend. She gave her friend a letter that said, these are the instructions I want you to tell my family. This is how I want them to do this. And her instructions in the book were that they each have their letter, that they're not supposed to open them and read them until Thanksgiving. The family hadn't had a Thanksgiving in together in, a while. in years. So she said, the first Thanksgiving is happening at Paris's house. You all will get together and you're going to sit down and read these letters to each other on that day. And if you don't get together and have this Thanksgiving following my passing, if you don't have Thanksgiving that year, you guys are not to open these letters before you have your first Thanksgiving together. And every year after this, you all have to have Thanksgiving together at one of the siblings' houses. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the way it was done in the movie was right after she passed away. They read it. <clears throat> they sat there after everyone cleared out and they read these letters and light bulb moment went off. I usually don't give away an ending, but I don't know. I think this is, this is, you, you gotta see you it, kinda, you gotta read it. Yeah, and it's like, know? I don't feel like it's a, a movie where you watch it and you, you're, you're not looking at it like, it's not, it doesn't have like a suspenseful ending or mm -hmm. like this plot twist or anything like that. It's pretty self-explanatory and it's pretty like Straight, you can kind of see what's going on you, the situations you may not see up front mm -hmm. but it's family stuff it's stuff that you would see in a lot of different families a lot of different situations it's not anything like shocking and i like the way the story ended to me it was a happy Mm -hmm. ending you know that they're going to still have fights you know that there's still going to be weird things you know there are things that still have to be done yeah. um, but at the end she made them look at what was going mm -hmm. on yeah you know and she she was the one speaking in the letter but having somebody else read the letter to the other person mm -hmm. it made all of them stop and listen, it's like she became a therapist post, po post, what's the word? Mortem. Yeah, post-mortem. She became a therapist. Yeah. And in a gentle way, more gentle than she had before, she said, hey, I'm gone. You guys need each other, including the dad, you know, because his thing was, these kids haven't needed us in at least 15 years. And she was like, no. No, you just didn't. haven't. In yeah. Her, yeah, in her head, it was like you haven't been around. You've been at work all the time. Like, how would you know? Right. And even like the angst that the the daughter had, it was just kind of like the daughter and the the oldest daughter and the the youngest son. It was like they had the most disconnect with their dad because he just wasn't around. Like, right. and they both had the most responsibility. Lewis didn't necessarily think of it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, he was just living moment to moment, trying to get to see his son. And, ooh, if for nothing else, y'all got to see this for what he did where his son was concerned. Because even though he was struggling to pay child support and stuff like that, and he wasn't always available, um, he was a dad when he needed to be a dad. Mm -hmm. But at the end, his mother told him, you have to be there for your sisters. Basically saying, you're the man of the house now. Mm -hmm. Your dad's off doing other stuff. We ain't going to blame him for that. He has a whole other family that he's starting. He's there for you, but you have to look out for your sisters. It's time for you to come out of this little box that you've put yourself in. And so the oldest and the youngest become the balance mm. for the whole family. So... All in all, as far as um, if you like a, a family movie, um, like you said, similar to something like Soul Food, this is it. Yeah. And I would even call this a holiday movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm basing that more on the book than 
the film itself. Um, oh, I did mention we were going to talk about Paris's son's name. Oh, yeah. Okay, so don't know what Paris was thinking. There was never an explanation in the book as to why she gave her son this name. There wasn't an explanation in the movie. But she named her son Dingus. Mm -hmm. Yep, you heard me right. Dingus. And I'm sure at some point in your life, you may have called somebody that, and it was not a compliment. Yeah. Okay. And considering that he was the exact opposite of what we normally consider a dingus, um, it's kind of strange that that was the name. But the clean meaning of the name, um, its origins are Scottish, Dutch, and German, and it means valley, hollow, or thing. I'm still working out that connection, but that that's such a delusion. Honestly, name. I thought I thought because like he was kind of saying that with his girlfriend and stuff like that. I thought she was just calling him that, like because she was upset with him. Nope that that's but his government name. that is his name. And <laughs> that's I'm just his like, government name. But dingus also means penis. So. <laughs> You know, instead of calling somebody that you call them dingus, I'm not encouraging that behavior, but there it is. It's one of one of many slang terms that that's used in that way. And so the closest I could get to that was because he was out there giving the dingus to all his little girlfriends. You know, and that's that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, <laughs> and this is why I say there there's a line of humor in there yeah the story is serious the story is um re i guess you could say ref reflective mm -hmm. where you can kind of say gosh what's going on in my family what things are busted that needs Maybe fixing fix, yeah. and you know if i were to die today do i want to leave things in the, the their current state mm -hmm. type of thing you know it'll take your mind there um, but again, as, as a family movie, like I was saying, yeah, it's, it's similar to soul food. It's something you could sit down and watch with everybody and it tugs at your, your heartstrings. I think the cast was perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the cast was absolutely perfect. Um, and I, I was telling Zenny as I was reading the book and I already had who the actors were for the movie, I was like, mm cast it perfectly cast yeah. it perfectly my only wish is that they had stuck to the book mm. a lot more yeah it would have been a longer movie this was a, a lifetime movie so i get they only have an hour and a half to entertain in that space but you can find this on freebie um i think it's you can rent or purchase it. Not yeah. that you ought to if you know it's on freebie. But you can rent or purchase it on... Um, Voodoo. Well, yeah, Voodoo and Prime. Okay. Yeah, all of those places. So that's all we have for today. I was supposed to have a list of what we're doing next. We're still sussing that out. But, um, of course, with the Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday coming up um the next few shows are going to be a little bit staggered but i will have a list i will post it on our page on facebook media that moves we you will find us there you can also find us on youtube um the playlist is media that moves we we we're smart when we did that <laughs> but if you're having trouble just finding the playlist go to um I'm sorry, Media That Moves We is our page on YouTube. Movies That Move We is the pages, the, the playlist and the page um, on Facebook and on YouTube. So that's all we have for today. Join us next week. If you want to see what we have coming up, that's usually posted in the banner on the Facebook page. Check it out there and follow, like, and share. Invite your friends to, to check us out. Anyway, until next week, folks, thanks for joining us and 
Bye. Bye.